As we detailed earlier in the show, today marks the end of the vaccine passport system in Ontario. The province is also lifting all remaining capacity limits. It's welcome news for many business owners, but some people are concerned about what it could mean for the transmission of COVID-19. Ray Watt Dionandon is an epidemiologist and associate professor at the University of Ottawa. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. It's my pleasure. What do you make of Ontario ending its vaccine passport system now? It was going to happen inevitably. The question is, should it happen now or later? I think it probably should have happened later, given the fact we're coming off of a fairly large peak and there's still uh, a fair amount of of transmission happening. But it's happening now, so we have to learn to deal with it at an individual level. Now, is this linked to the science? Some of it is. A lot of it is linked to public demand and to political expediency. I don't like it when the lifting of restrictions are tied to calendar dates. They should be tied to indicators that we observe at an epidemiological level. But here we are, and we have to make do with the situation as it is. Right, and so um, you mentioned there are some things uh, that we can do. Can you talk a little bit about what those are? Well, nothing prevents us from wearing high quality masks still. So even if the government removes all restrictions across the board, as will eventually happen, it remains in the hands of the individual to protect themselves as well as they wish to do so. A high quality N95 mask protects us extremely well, even if there's a lot of transmission around us. We can still choose to be vaccinated and to surround ourselves with mostly vaccinated people, hopefully three doses. And we can choose to to blunt our exposures by limiting the time we spend in crowded spaces. A large number of things we can still do, and this is especially relevant for people like myself who have small children at home who can't yet be vaccinated or if you are immunocompromised or have some other issues putting you in a higher risk category. Right, so is there then a higher risk for people who are vaccinated um, eating next to people who are unvaccinated, for example? That's a difficult question. There is some modeling data to suggest that the vaccinated are more likely to be exposed to the virus if they're in close proximity to the unvaccinated. But two and especially three doses will blunt the probability of a bad outcome. We have to go back and ask ourselves, what was the point of the vaccine passport system? The first point was to encourage people to get vaccinated and it worked. The second point is to keep the unvaccinated out of super spreading environments to prevent super spreading events from taking place. Omicron has significantly compromised the ability of vaccines to limit transmission, not to zero, but somewhat. And as a result, uh, the science around whether or not that rationale still stands is questionable. If we were to redefine fully vaccinated at three doses, then the rationale for the vaccine passport system is restored, but it's not there. Right, so uh, should people then be thinking twice, like you said, about going to the restaurant they've been going to for the past two months as a vaccinated person now? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if you've got three doses in you, your probability of having a bad outcome to this disease is quite small. It comes down to, do you have other people in your life who need to be protected, like unvaccinated children, the extreme elderly, immunocompromised and so forth. If that's the case, then you have to make decisions that probably other people are not going to have to make. So risk is not shared equally across the population. Now that we've downloaded the responsibility for managing this pandemic from government onto the individual, every individual will have to deal with this in a different way, sadly. Yeah, I I wanted to talk a little bit about children, which we've already gotten into a little bit, but um, hearing from parents who are saying, well, it's not fair that we're removing this now. I can't even go and get my, my child who's under the age of five vaccinated if I wanted to. Yeah, it is unfair, I think. I think if we were to wait a few more months, like uh, late spring, for example, we'll probably get vaccination available for that age group. I haven't got a crystal ball. That's uh, what my feeling tells me. And if that were the case, things become a little more, a little less tense rather. So it is unfortunate. Uh, We shouldn't be removing the mask mandates anytime soon. I don't think that's the last line of defense and a very potent and effective line of defense. Yeah, I was going to ask about masking next actually, um, because we know the Premier is suggesting that that will be dropped soon. You think it should stay, especially in schools, I imagine? It's low cost, high impact. And again, it's something the individual can manage on his or herself. Um, uh, It's If everybody else is making bad choices around you, if you're in a place that is thriving with transmission, if you wear a high quality N95 mask that is well fitted, you have a a very high chance of preventing yourself from being exposed. So I think that option should always remain on the table so long as we have high levels of transmission. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time. It's my pleasure, thank you. Ray Watt Dionandon is an epidemiologist and associate professor at the University of Ottawa.